Further vital financial support will be provided to businesses affected by the COVID-19 restrictions. The wage subsidy and mortgage deferral scheme will be extended and COVID-19 sick leave will be tweaked to be made more accessible. Well, joining me now is Finance Minister Grant Robertson. Good evening, Minister. To start off with, I mean, the decision to extend the alert level for 12 more days in Auckland, was that difficult given you know how much businesses are struggling? Oh, look, good evening, Lisa. Look, obviously we weigh up against uh, the different issues that are put in front of us. Clearly there are the public health issues and they are significant, albeit that we are doing a pretty good job of managing this cluster for now. But we do weigh that against the the economic issues and it's the very reason why uh, we made the decision today at the same time to extend out that wage subsidy scheme as well. So we know how tough this is on businesses, but we have never wavered from the view that the best economic economic response is a strong public health response. I believe that's already been borne out and what's happened in New Zealand. We've stuck to that, but we've also come along with further support for businesses. Did anyone disagree with the 12 days? No. Okay. So where have you identified the most immediate need for supporters? Well, obviously it is about the businesses who have not been able to open, and Level 3 in in Auckland will mean that for a number. Others will be opening in very restricted circumstances. But one of the things we identified pretty early on when we were considering this this week was that we couldn't really put in place a regional scheme, either administratively or because actually a lot of businesses outside of Auckland rely on Auckland, be that tourism businesses in the regions waiting for Aucklanders to come uh, down for a break or those who supply into Auckland. Obviously also Level 2 itself provides some restrictions, particularly around retail and hospitality. So when we put all of that together, we concluded that a nationwide uh, wage subsidy extension was the right thing to do. I know you're still working through all of this, but where do you reckon the threshold is going to be? And will it just be for the extension, the third tranche, if you like, just be for this 12 days? Yeah, look, I mean, we're working through the detail of that, as you suggest. It will be relatively similar to what's come before, because actually tweaking the criteria would would only slow down the ability for us to get the money out the door. MSD has said once we make the final call, they can get it out within, within five days. One point to bear in mind here is that the first of the wage subsidy extensions is actually still available for people until the 1st of September. And for some businesses, they may not have thought they were eligible. That required a 40% uh, reduction in in revenue um, in in 30 of the 40 days prior to applying. I think for a number of businesses now, they may well actually find that they are eligible. So they can get in and apply for that right away. This scheme is then available, the one we've announced today, is available for people whose extension has already ended or perhaps they didn't take up the extension. Um, So once all of that's happened, we'll be able to give a a firmer idea of the total cost and so on. But eligibility-wise, we'll make those final decisions on Monday. But are you thinking you'll stick with around the 40% loss? Yeah, look, I mean, probably it'll be a decision either between the 30 or 40%. The 30 was the initial scheme, the 40% was the extension, but we just wanted to do a little bit more work over the weekend to look at some of the, the details of, of the impact. We'll just talk further with our business leaders in Auckland, which we've been doing through the week as well. How much of your $14 billion that you've got in your little kitty for dark times are you prepared to, to put to this? Well, obviously the estimates on that will will be finalised once we've got the the fine detail of the criteria. And it depends a little bit on how much is used from uh, the existing scheme. We do have um, money left in that allocation, um, nearly $2 billion left in that allocation. And so we believe that that may well end up being sufficient uh, and we won't need to dip into the $14 billion. But putting the $14 billion aside was for this circumstance. So if that's necessary, we we will do it. Given that, obviously, you've got to work out where best to target your support and who to help, did you give any consideration this afternoon into letting the South Island go to level one? Uh, that wasn't. Uh, I mean, that wasn't something that we we went into a lot of detail on. We we were concerned to make sure that we stuck with uh, the original decision we'd made, in part because. Obviously, while the cluster is contained largely to 
Auckland, the people involved have travelled. And, for example, they've travelled to Rotorua or down to Taupo. And that means that, you know, there is the possibility that there have been other people around them who may have picked up uh, some kind of infection. So we felt that the prudent thing to do was to stick with Level 2 uh, for the rest of the country. You would have heard the Prime Minister say that after seven days we are going to review the decision that we've made. One of the reasons for that is to see whether or not there is any spread outside of the Auckland area, um, and that gives us some flexibility should we choose to to revisit that decision after seven days. Potentially, by going a third round here, are you just delaying the inevitable? Because, I mean, how long can you afford to keep saying, oh, we'll just do one more lot of wage subsidy, oh, we're going to have to do another one, maybe we'll do another one? That's not sustainable, is it? Well, obviously, you know, we, we bear that in mind as part of the decisions here. I think the, the the decision to move up to Level 3 was very influential because Level 3 does reduce the activity in the economy. It's clearly only been designed for the period of time that we're in, in Level 3, so it's a short uh, amount of time, and therefore we think it is sustainable. Um, and obviously for a lot of businesses, you know, they're making their decisions and their plans looking looking a substantial distance further ahead than that. But we felt this was the appropriate thing to do, particularly given it's Auckland, and Auckland does have such a significant say in the overall economy of New Zealand. So how many more times can you afford to do that, though? Well, uh, it's not really a matter of that. That's not how we're looking at it. It's about the specific circumstances that are, that are in front of us with this set of restrictions. We put that $14 billion aside to be able to deal with um, second waves, and so we'll be careful about the way that we deal with that. But we think this is the appropriate decision for this particular circumstance. Also, the COVID uh, benefits. So this was the increased amount of money for people who had lost their jobs due to COVID, right, from March uh, to the 30th of October. Do you anticipate an extension for that particular payment? Not at this time. That's not something we're considering. I mean, that payment is obviously still available for people who are losing their jobs at the moment. And so it, it has, you know, a little over 20,000, perhaps up to 22,000 people who've, who've drawn down on that now. But no, we have no intention to change that. The other element that we did uh, make decisions about today at Cabinet uh, is the leave scheme. And we do want to make that leave scheme more accessible. Uh, we want to make sure that nobody thinks that if they did a test and then it turned positive that somehow or other that would leave them without a livelihood or without a job, particularly for people who've perhaps exhausted their sick leave requirements already. So we're going to be looking at some modifications to that scheme over the weekend to make it more accessible for people.